few years ago, Jeff Immelt, the CEO of GE, said something really profound. He said, this is not just another economic downturn or another economic cycle. This is a complete psychological, social, and economic reset. Right? I mean, our houses are never going to be worth what they were four years ago. They're just not. I'm still trying to convince my wife of that, but it's just not going to get there. We're never going to buy as many Louis Vuitton purses or BMWs. Things are just reset. And what's profound is that the reset is shifting a focus towards value. In Chicago, the Sears Tower, the most iconic building in America, was recently renamed the Willis Tower. Who's Willis? I mean, last I heard of Willis, it was like different strokes 20 years ago. I mean, it's some random insurance broker in the UK that bought the naming rights to the Sears Tower, the three million square foot Sears Tower. And guess how many square feet Willis leased to get the naming rights? to the three million square foot Sears Tower. 50% is usually the benchmark for naming rights. They leased 150,000 square feet. There is a fundamentally new definition of value today. And the owner of the building was like, we'll take it, we'll take it, whatever you want, right? People are focused on value. And I think that that means something for the nonprofit sector as well. The last three, four, five years, it's all been about impact and results and effectiveness and accountability. I submit that that's done. It is about value today. What value are you creating? What are your results per cost? And how compelling are your results to certain sets of stakeholders? The profound problem that we face in the nonprofit sector today is that we have no leverage. I started a nonprofit, right? I mean, how many of us have sat in front of a funder and said, like, you don't understand, you have to fund us. If you care about this issue, we are the most effective, most amazing organization out there. You have to give us money. And they'll look at you and they'll say, yeah, it's not really a fit. No one has to give you anything. We have no leverage. And that is a really frustrating, confounding situation. Also in new economics that we're facing today, where the notion of charity is fundamentally changing. Think about it, kiva.org, right? I mean, you can give $500 away to a micro-entrepreneur in another country and get your money back, maybe with 30% interest, and that's considered charity. It's a different world. I would argue that we are moving from what I used to call an independent sector, where it was about charity and relationships and who you knew and the focus on the program and not general operating expenses and we just want to make sure that you're not wasting money and be accountable to a social capital market. I mean a true social capital market, meaning an economy that values social change, that attaches economic value to social outcomes. That is a fundamentally profound and powerful proposition. The market values social change. And you know what that means? We don't need to beg anymore because we got something everybody wants. There is real economic value associated with social change. There's over a trillion dollars invested in socially responsible investments today. How do we connect and sell our impact to people who economically value what we do so that we have leverage. But there's a million nonprofits in this country. So that's $200,000 for each of you. That's not a lot of money. But if we look at the social capital market, that's a much bigger pie. I actually searched the internet for the biggest pie in the world. <laughs> that's it. Um, this is the $32 billion a year that companies are spending on social responsibility. This is the $1 trillion a year that investors are investing in social responsible businesses. This is the $200 billion a year that LOHAS consumers, lifestyles of health and sustainability consumers are spending on socially conscious goods and services. This is the $500 billion a year that we're spending on education. These are the outcomes that the market wants to buy. 
and we can sell it to them in a different mindset. These are donors and foundations and government agencies who are outcomes driven. They have an outcome, a clearly stated outcome that they have allocated money to buy. Robin Hood Foundation here in New York, the Innovation Fund at the Department of Education, the Gates Foundation, the Skoll Foundation, outcomes focused funders, people who know exactly what they want and who have attached an economic value to that outcome, right? The X Prize. We're going to spend this much if you can help get something into space or whatever. You need to find those folks and stop wasting time with psychic value funders who don't want anything, who are just nice people, who grandmother runs a family foundation. She might like you and give you some money, but maybe not, and you have to go to this fundraiser with her. I mean, it's ridiculous. We're chasing 25 grand, 50 grand here and there, and we should be focusing on the social investors who value our outcome. And finally, you need to sell your impact to those folks. You need to create compelling value propositions that show your track record and your ability to produce real value for those outcomes. It's a fundamentally different proposition, but it is the future and it is liberating and it is the way forward for all of us because today all nonprofits need to be social entrepreneurs, not just social entrepreneurs. We have to do this to survive.